Hi, uh, first of all, thanks to Theo uh, for, for taking the time to go through some questions. Um, obviously, you've seen so many others, mate, and uh, now we'll look at, uh, at your opinions and point of view. Um, yeah. How I know Theo. Theo, uh, Lewis joined um, the school in year eight, and were, you, you know you become good mates straight away, really. Um, yeah. and, uh, and from then on, and obviously, you know, since then, we know mum and dad well and things like that. So, okay, mate. So what we'll do, we'll go through a few questions, get your point of view, your side of things, and then we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So obviously the big, big topic on everybody's list at the moment, again, is racism. And, and unfortunately, it tends to spike when something like this happens, that, that sadly happened with, with the murder of George Floyd. Um, yeah, there's, there's a big outpouring and there's a... And then it tends to die off a little bit. Um, the plan for these kind of interviews, and as long as I can keep them going, and other people, is we really need to keep our foot on the gas and, and not let it tail off again. So, yeah. have you ever, ever, ever suffered from or been a victim of racism? Yeah, but not as as bad as in like places like America, where it's out and out. People are, you know, you can tell they're being racist for definite. Yeah. It's passive aggressive, I'd say, or um, accidental, or like almost as if people don't mean it. Okay. And then, so, so as well, sometimes you get, you people get a vibe, don't they, of certain things, if they're liked yeah. or not liked and things like that. Uh, and, and, do you ever have you ever come across a vibe where you think it, or, or do you think it's just as you say, been sort of accidental or banter and things like that? I think banter and accidental things—they're kind of a different part of it. But I think that vibe, definitely, yeah, I feel that quite often. Really? Yeah. And that's that's that, you know that that's so sad to hear because for for a long period of time, I explained in an earlier interview that I did that. You know, I, I just thought um, for a long part of my adult life, because I, I wasn't seeing it, I, you know, I, I was under the impression that, yeah, it, it wasn't that bad and it, it, it practically gone away and things like that. But as I've got a bit older and I've listened and read more and, and uh, social media as well, um, it definitely seems that it, it's still prominent. And that's the issue is if somebody is verbal and vocal, and violent or you know you, you can kind of see those and you know what you're dealing with but it's that underlying feeling and yeah where do you where have you sort of come across that or experienced that where would you say are some of the worst places um i'm not really too sure where the worst places are it's kind of not everywhere but it can it can happen anywhere mm -hmm. i remember one time i was in my workplace, not workplace, work experience placement. Um, and I kind of walked in and everyone was a bit like, they weren't expecting me, if you know what I mean. It, although they're, they're expecting a student, but they weren't expecting me. Um, so expecting a student and coming from the Peterborough school, yeah, yeah, which, you know, they're expecting a student to walk in, private school boy, and you walk in and they're a little bit taken back because they weren't, they were expecting a white kid. Yeah. And then it took them, I, I could feel it, and then once like the ice was broken, they'd kind of spoken to me. Yeah. Then it wasn't really that much of a problem anymore. Well, there wasn't, but you, there wasn't that vibe anymore. But it was just that initial like when I walked in, how I was like perceived. Yeah, yeah, and I suppose almost like the conversation you know I had with with Dad yesterday when I did the interview with him. I'm sure he's experienced that when he's walked into certain car showrooms or, or met an estate agent at houses, because of course he's got high level cars and, and a really nice house. So when he's gone through those kind of things, I still imagine that there's people that have been a bit surprised when, when a black guy turns up, mm, you know, just seems crazy. Um, so do you think, I, I thought yesterday in, in one of the chats that I had with Alton, um, I know online can be a lot worse because 
I think it gives people a barrier now. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I know that some of the lads have been in, in groups or parties or whatever you call it with Lou and you've been having games against other people. And yeah. sometimes when the kids realise, and certainly if they're losing, they realise one of the kids is black, you know, even up to last week, bang, they get nailed. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of them things that happens. Really. And I thought that was, I, I thought, I thought that was terrible. And then, oh, you know, old sort of said that he, he felt school was one of the worst fights. Um, you know, uh, did you have any experiences or, or, or come across that at your school? Um, times, because sometimes you forget about it. But there's a few times when you kind of think, hang on, that was actually a bit racist or hang on, that was actually a bit, you know. Uh, I experienced it with kids as well as, uh, I actually experienced it with teachers as well. Um, really? Yeah. So I think one time I was getting told off, I, I did something wrong in homework club. Um, and I was getting told off for it. And they got um, one of like the higher up teachers to come and speak to me. And I'm taller than her and which I don't think was a problem and I was speaking to her in like in a normal manner I was articulating myself well how I speak to teachers mm -hmm. had my hand um, down in front of me not so I wasn't like trying to be threatening at all and then she just kept repeating that so saying that I was being threatening I was being um, aggressive towards her and she didn't like the way that I was speaking to her and I actually had a real problem with it I, afterwards. I was like, wow. I, and I saw one of my friends who's in the year above, and I told him about it. He's another mixed race lad. Um, and he said, oh, no, don't worry about it. It's because you're mixed race. And I was like, sorry. He's like, yeah, because him and his friend, they both experienced the same thing. And when they spoke to their white friends about it, they never experienced it with her. It was just them, them too. Uh, well, that, that, that's horrendous. That's horrendous. Because for those of you that don't know Theo, Theo is far from aggressive. He's not an aggressive lad whatsoever. You articulate yourself extremely well. You're always pleasant. You're very respectful. So, you know, to, to, for someone to find you or see you as threatening, they've seen you in a very different light, which is... You, you you have to ask the question, and like you say, you come back to the feeling that you sometimes get. Um, because for what other reason would there be? You know, yeah. it's it, it's awful. So, do you think racism is something for the black community to deal with, or do you think that we've got to unite and deal with it together? I think you, like we need to unite at the end of the day because. I think it's one of them things where if it's just one group of people trying to tackle this subject, it's not going to get tackled because it's just going to be them shouting, the other people maybe listening or maybe not listening. But if everyone's on the same side, then, yeah. I, I agree. And I think there's a risk that there's some opinion that, you know, some people kind of push back. You can understand it, but they're pushing back against... Right, and I'm only talking about a small fraction. And of course, you've got people, you know, Andy Joshua made his speech over the weekend. I don't know if you've seen it. And I'm, a, I'm you know, I'm a massive fan of Andy Joshua. I've seen all these fights. I back him all the way. Um, and for what it's worth, actually, I think he's been the darling of British sport. I think he's been extremely loved and well liked. And I think, if anything, and, um, Tyson Fury's received. Uh, more pushbacks against him, maybe because of his culture. But Andy mm. Joshua sort of came out and he's made some comments that have been deemed very racist the other way, you know, don't spend money in white people's shops and these kind of things, which is a shame. And, and I think he did it off the cuff and he was reading something. But all of a sudden you've got that where people can be pushing back and you think, no, come on, don't, don't make the divide any bigger. We've got to make it, we've got to come together. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, you, you've seen it um, uh, um, with your friends. Now, I have my own opinion on banter. So banter to, to an extent, and every friendship group is different. Mine, we, when I was a kid, and still now when we see each other, and I'm, you know, in my early 40s, we absolutely annihilate each other all the time. Any chance we get, they get it. 
So, but is racism really something that should be zero tolerance? Because is it something for banter? I think that there's a fine line between racism and banter because I feel like it, it can come into it quite a lot. Um, I think my kind of policy in is it policy is as long as it's not derogatory, yep. as long as and as long as it's meant in a funny way and it is actually funny and maybe it's clever or something like that, then I think it's I think it's fine. But I think it's when it's it's spiteful, it's not clever, they derogatory terms are thrown about and stuff. I think that's when it gets to the point of that wasn't banter, that was actually a bit. And I think I think some of it as well is tone, how things are said. You know, if you uh, um, and and are thinking how it comes across. So, for example, you you know, if there's a group of people and there's five guys and one of them's black and he's got your phone. Oh, who's got it? Oh, ask the black guy. He's got it. But then, if somebody else goes to that black guy over there, there's yeah. different ways of saying things. So. Again, so I think as well, maybe your generation may be a little bit more tolerant to the banter, maybe than say dad's when dad was younger, because he had the real difficulties, you know, yeah. when he was younger. So, of course, it was too close to the cloth to yeah. have banter. So I think your generation are a little bit more tolerant of things that I've heard and jokes when you've all been round and things like that. You know, um, so yeah, it, it's one of those things that you kind of look at it and go, mm, banter, but I think you're right. It's, you know, personally, I'd be uncom uncomfortable with banter, um, but I, I am of, of, of a different age. Mm. Um, so do you think, obviously not all, because mum's white, um, but do you think many white people do you think a large majority of white people are still racist or got an underlying feeling or not i don't know how like numbers would be like majority or minority of um white people but i feel like it's definitely still prominent but i feel like it's not it's not out and out oh i really don't like that group i hate them or anything like that i feel like it's more they have prejudgments on them um almost like they are not afraid of them but they are careful about them if you know what i mean there's different there's still a difference so yeah. okay just because now you know from talking to key's granddad the other day and your dad from you know diff different times you know key's granddad experienced in, in, in and in a different video i shared earlier you know guys when they first came over to the uk um, in the 50s, 40s and 50s, and 60s probably, you know, there were signs on the door, no blacks, no dogs, no Irish. You know, so, you know, obviously that's not happening. So what you're saying now with vocal and that, that's not happening and going on. Mm. But that doesn't mean that that undercurrent or that feeling isn't there. So as you say, you know, it's quite interesting actually that you say your work experience when you turned up on, not that they were... A different towards you throughout your work experience when you first turned up. What that does also suggest, and, and the conversations that I've had, is corporations and how people are. So you're coming to an age now where you're going into further education, and then in two years' time or six years, whenever, if you go to university or not, all of a sudden, you're going out into the wide world to get a job, you put your CV, you've got it, walk in, and that gentleman or lady is going to make a first first impression. You've got a first impression. And if theirs is, oh, I, I didn't realize it was black. Mm. I think there is still there are still people that think along those lines. Definitely, yeah. Because when you walk into a room, especially like, well, especially what I've felt when I walk into a room. I feel like people, if I catch someone's eye or people look in my direction, yeah. then I feel like they will, they will just look at me and they'll think, oh, I wonder what he's like. I wonder if he's going to, how he's going to talk, how he's going to 
you know, what he's about, things like that. Yeah, because as well, you see, you've got um, you, you've got Dad, who's got a, quite a different personality to you as well. You know, Dad's quite, you know, Dad's a bit bullshit and he's a bit, you know, and, and yeah. things like that. Um, so, so, of course, I think that's an impression that people get. Um, and you're right, how they're going to act, how they're going to be. So some people as well could be standoffish, I suppose, not knowing, you know, almost with a prejudgmental sense that, oh, he could be a certain way. So they're almost judging you in a negative way on how they'll act towards you. They're waiting to see how you are. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's a, that just seems crazy. So, and then of course, okay, so places we look at and we go, well, yeah, it's, it's an issue with, with black people, but mum and dad obviously got together and um, dad's black, mum's white. Has mum ever suffered or have you had conversations? Has mum ever suffered either being with your dad or with you guys? Um, I don't really think um, being with me that uh, mum's ever experienced it. I know from stories that they told me that she experienced like out and out racism when she was with my older brothers, Ollie and Lou, when they were younger, um, which wasn't great. I think someone called them the N word or and like but said it to her. They're like, I'll keep your N words in check or something like that. Off the street, wasn't it? I think keep the N words off the street. Yeah, something like that. And um, I think my mum, obviously, because she loves a black man and she's got two mixed race or black children that she loves as well. She got hurt by it as well. Like, it's almost like... Yeah. Devastated. And angry, angry, upset, you know, because she's not seeing colour whatsoever. And, you know, we, we can all see. So I, I, I met you, I met Dad, I met whoever I meet. Like I said in my introduction video early on, of course, of course I can see you're black. Yeah. There's an issue with you being black, and that's the difference. But I think yeah. there are still some people, and, it, you know, for mum to have received it from someone, it shows how low that person was. There was a woman on her own with two small children, and they've targeted her and them purely and simply because of the colour of their skin. Mm, yeah disgusting. disgusting so and obviously dad i spoke to yesterday and he's he received all sorts of uh, yeah places. and certainly when he was younger and he grew up in in bedford and you know lived in not the greatest part and you know i mean he's received it all the way through and we joked yesterday you know that, that although it's not funny that yeah were you a footballer no, he's just a very successful black man that can afford a nice car and a fantastic house and everything else. How, heaven forbid he should actually be successful in his own right other than because of his sporting ability. Mm, yeah, there's been, there's been a lot of that, to be fair. I think the rumour started with some kids. Uh, I think that's what he was actually, when we first moved here, they thought that he was a famous reggae singer. I don't know, I can't remember what his name is. Because he had dreadlocks, um, <laughs> and he was a famous reggae singer at first. And then there was a rumour that he was um, Ivan Tony. I think he's posh. I'm not, I'm not too sure. I don't really follow football, but and yeah. Dad, they... Thank you for saying, but he's old enough to be Ivan Tony's dad. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. So, I mean, one of the things, do you, th do you think it's getting better? Definitely, yeah. Definitely, because I think... From what my dad's told me, his experience has been. Uh, from what he's told me that he, what his parents experienced, and even from what my brother's experienced, there's like a, almost a ten year gap between me and my oldest brother. Um, and even just the the difference, I don't really see it in the same way. Like I don't I don't see racism as often as they did, obviously, which is a good thing. But yeah. And it'd be interesting, actually, because they're almost, although you're siblings, they're almost a different generation. Um, yeah. So, you know, it'd be interesting. Uh, you know, I might, you know, have a word and maybe do an interview with them because then I've got your dad's take, their take and your take, and we can see the change happening. 
but we've got to continue that. And, and like we keep saying, it's not okay anymore just to say, well, I'm not racist. No, okay, well, so you shouldn't be. Well done. You're not judging someone because they're the color of their skin. Actually, now it's time to stop minding your own business and tell other people to sort themselves yeah. So I suppose my, my, my last question to you, mate, of the ones that I've got written down. Dad's black, mum's white, you're mixed race. How do you identify? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as black, white, or mixed race? I, that I, I see myself as mixed race, but I feel like I carry myself as black because that's what people are going to see. Yes. Very interesting, because that was what I was going to go on to say. You see yourself in a certain way, because obviously you've got mum and mum's side, dad and dad's side, so you're, you're absolutely mixed race, and you, you've got both sides of the family. And the next question was going to be, do you think other people see you as white, black, or mixed race? Definitely black. I, 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 I do. I still, think, I still think people see people as black or white. So if, if you're not white, you're black. You can be extremely light mixed race, but because you're not white, you're still black. Yeah. Unbelievable, really. But, but it's funny to, that, that you do identify or you do see yourself completely uh, as mixed race and, 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 and very much because there's some other, I mean, your brothers, for example, they might have a slightly different view. They might go, no, I see myself as, as black and things like that. And I asked Dad, I wonder if it's, you know, if, if boys can follow in their father's footsteps, if, if it's the dad's side or the mum's side, maybe that could sway. Mm -hmm. But it's funny because, well, not funny, but the opinion of people is, and when I speak to mixed race people, other people see them as black. If they're not yeah, white, yeah. they're black. Which, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, you know, it's fair. I don't really see it. I don't really think about it, if I'm honest. But, you know, if I see you as a family, you, mum and dad, it doesn't even enter my head. I don't, I don't even think. So I suppose yeah. you're right. It's other people's opinions when they, when they first see you. But it's just, it, it is still mad that it is still there, that colour of skin can make a difference to people's opinion. Mm. Yeah, it does. Crazy. Well, mate, that's all I had. That's the questions I had for you. Um, it, 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 it's great to get your perspective uh, of the younger generation coming through because I think my generation made great strides and we yeah. can continue to do so. And I think your generation will probably be the ones that really stamp this out. I don't think you'll ever get rid of it completely on either side. I think there'll always be people of certain races that will judge others. But a large, large percentage, I think it's your generation that could really make the biggest impact so far. Um, yeah. Fingers crossed. And, and, and we need to work together as races, as communities, and as, uh, and as generations just to stamp this out. I think the, the biggest thing that I think that's going to help is, um, obviously, this. I feel like this George Floyd's death and the whole situation that's come of it, I feel like it's woken everyone up and I feel like we can't just go back to sleep now. We need to wake up, get up and make change. Really. All right, mate, perfectly put. I, I, I don't think, you know, it would be so wrong if in two weeks time all the banners are in the bin, they're all being recycled. Oh, we threw a statue in the river. Absolutely right. Why was there a statue of a slave trader in the first place? Yeah. It's madness. But okay, so we brought it down, we've thrown it in the river, we've made these banners, we've set our point, they're all gone to recycling. Now let's just get back to normal. No, because normal can't involve racism. Exactly, yeah. We need to just make it change. Absolutely, and we need to do it together. Fantastic. And, um, Have you got anything to add? Um, I don't think so, no. No. Uh, I, I suppose the last question, the last question. What do you think, and I've, I've asked other people this, what, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a white guy of my generation or the white guys of your generation, what more or what can we do to make the difference? I think 
internally, you need to understand, like, doing, understanding, educating, and stuff like that is perfect. And I think externally to help spread awareness and get other people to educate themselves. Just sharing stuff, even if it's on Instagram or wherever, even if it's just verbally when in a conversation, just sharing your thoughts, your feelings, or and just trying to get that message across that racism isn't okay. Long may we do that, mate. Shoulder to shoulder, and we've got to do it, and we've got to make sure we continue to do so. Definitely. Brilliant. Okay, mate, thank you very much for your time. It's been, it's been really interesting. It's another thing, uh, uh, another person's point of view, and I'm hearing very similar things, certainly from each age group and generation. Although it's improving, we need to do more. Yeah, no, definitely. Fantastic, mate. Thank you very much for your time. Cool. All right, thank you.